For the last 4 years, Destiny 2 is the game that I just can't seem to let go of. Even though I talk a lot of bad things about this game, it is undeniable that this game has given me a lot of long-time gaming friends. It has been subject to a lot of criticism, and understandably so. Destiny 2 has this weird pattern where the content that they drop are just a hit or miss. It can't really hold a lot of their players because of this, including me. Well, granted, I come back to it once in a while, but I'm talking about players who religious, religiously play it. Now, if you have watched some Destiny 2 videos, you probably ran into some videos that says, uh, this will save Destiny 2, or Destiny 2 is saving, you, you know, like the titles along those, along those lines. It's because a lot of people really want this game to survive, but it keeps doing stuff that kills itself. The fact that it feels like it doesn't respect your time just puts people off. The worst time I feel like where they lost a lot of their players was when they made sense setting a thing. People who grinded their ass off for weeks or months even just for weapons and gear and Destiny just defaults them and, you know, render them useless. I mean, I get it since we need content shifting and new metas or whatever, but personally, I feel like they should have just kept it in because, you know, power creeping was a thing anyway. And now, Final Shape has been released and if you are a longtime Destiny 2 player, you just can't help it but at least give it a look if it's worth coming back to the game that we all love to hate. Let's see what we currently have then. First, what we can see is that they reverted sunsetting, which means you can now use your old stuff. Well, if you haven't deleted them, still that is. And more importantly, looking at the content the final shape has, it looks like there's a lot to it. The campaign playthrough is fun and engaging. The story itself is pretty straightforward, like uh, it's in the end of the world and we all have to fight the big baddie or whatnot. But with the character's dilemma and character changes along the way, a mixture of emotions, both like sad and happiness, are present at the same time. I really don't want to spoil the story, but I can guarantee you that it is a banger. It is actually one of the story missions that I watch the cutscenes. Yeah. And I can probably say that it's better than Witch Queen, at least in my opinion. But that's not all. The story itself is already good, but with the mechanics within the story mission, it's also engaging enough for you to be stimulated while playing it, rather than just, you know, running and gunning everything. Of course, there is a legendary version of the campaign, if you don't know already, where it has a higher difficulty, but gives you better rewards and a guaranteed DLC exotic at the end of the campaign. One of my favorite parts about this DLC is that the latest raid is something to look forward to. If you think Last Wish and Vow of the Disciple was something, then you'll get a kick out of the Salvation's Edge. There was only one team, I think, that finished the raid within the first 24 hours, so that's saying something. Personally, I haven't even finished it yet. We got stuck at the fourth encounter and we're still trying to get the peeps back together to finish it. Well, you know, it's one of the greatest challenges of Destiny 2. It's getting the raid team together without scheduling ahead. Or maybe it's just us getting older and having more responsibilities just caught up to us. Content-wise, currently there is no new dungeon for the final shape, but I guess they're gonna release it along the way as seasons go by, since that's their usual formula. Unless, of course, you count secret missions as dungeons like the Whisper, then they do have one, which is also really good, since it gives you a borderline broken exotic if you get to do it. The only downside is that you have to do it as a duo. Well, apart from the raid, of course, you get this unique thing for every DLC, and the final shape gives you this new subclass combining the light and dark powers. The new subclass with the new weapons and other stuff, the build crafting potential is just endless. There are a lot of things that you can just dick around with and still be as effective on a lot of the endgame contents. What I also love is that the new weapons are actually unique. Okay, maybe not that unique when it comes to the design, but I guess you're bound to run out of gun models when you're running a game like Destiny. But what you need to consider is that these weapons actually have unique capabilities and not just the same gun from older seasons and just looks different. PvP-wise, the 
PvP sandbox. Oh boy. I mean, I used to play a lot of Destiny 2 PvP and it probably cost me a few inches off my hairline, but it was fun while it lasted. Currently, the sandbox is kind of evened out to where a lot of the weapon archetypes are usable. Of course, it you know it, it really doesn't change the fact that some are more powerful than others, but that's just how it is. What's different though is that at least now you can play with what you want and still rack up some kills in the Crucible. Before I stopped playing, it was dictated by just one meta and at the time, I was fine with it because I just didn't feel like using stuff that I don't know about. But with a perspective change, it feels nice to dick around with other weapons and not feel like you're getting rammed in the b-hole 24-7. Destiny 2 PvP is and always will be unbalanced and the sooner we accept it, the better we can deal with the hair loss. I know it gets frustrating when people abuse a lot of the broken stuff but it's in the game, what are you gonna do about it? Overall, if you want to get back to Destiny 2, now is probably the best time. I know there's a good chance that a lot of people are in a honeymoon phase, again. With Destiny 2's new DLC, but in my opinion, it's looking good so far. I never had fun with Destiny as much as I have now, PvP and PvE wise. And trust me, I hate Destiny 2. But hating on something that actually is fun just feels like you're just hating to hate, and that's not who we are. But of course, you know, you are entitled to your own opinion. If you think it's still not enough to bring you back, and you want more, or if you just think that Destiny is just not worth your time anymore, then I respect that. If there was a game that I could probably get into, maybe I wouldn't come back either. But as of the moment, Destiny 2 is doing it for me. So that's all the stuff that I think that could grab your attention back to the game. And if I missed something, I apologize. That's everything I guess and I'll see you guys on the next one.